and welcome to another of Mrs. Patnell's maths lessons. We're a little wonky, hold on. It is at least, well hopefully, going to work better today. I seem to have cleared the memory off of my phone. I say I have, I've got my daughter to do it. So now hopefully I've got a full empty memory and this lesson will flow beautifully. Sorry about yesterday's one. Okay, so we're going to start off our exploring numbers lesson today with the months of the year. How many months of the year are there? There are 12. 10 and two more. There are 12 months in the whole of the year. When we reach month number 12, which is December, where do we go? Is that the end? Is there no more? No, of course not. We start back up with January and we work back through them again. Okay, so 12 months in the year. Let's have a go at singing our song. January, February, March and April, May, June, July and August, September, October, November, December, these are the months of the year. I was only trying with that one because I noticed I was a bit flat the other day. Let's do it one more time. January, February, March and April, May, June, July and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Now, it is January still, but only for a few more days. I believe Sunday is the last day of the month of January. So we know that the next month, as from Monday, we will move into February. We can still expect lots of cold weather and a bit of snow for like a weather reporter here. But we are moving ever closer to springtime, the season of spring, where the flowers start to come out. You might notice a few snowdrops when you go out for a walk. And there's a nice, nice little pretty yellow flower that comes out this time of year as well. Um, but as we start to creep out of February into March, so many more flowers will start to pop up. In fact, the daffodil bulbs are growing because you can see the green stalks poking out of the ground. They're just not quite ready for the flower yet which is good because the weather is so cold and frosty at the moment, it's handy that they haven't popped out yet because they will catch a chill. Right, I'm just going to pop this over onto the side. And now we are going to have a little bit of a count. Now, it's going to take us a little while, but I think we can count to... Do you think we can count to 100 today? Do you think we can go all the way up the 100 square? I think probably we can. Are you ready? High on the multiples of five. Low on the multiples of 10, the ones that end in a zero, okay? And we are going to count in tens after this, which is this, um, what should we call it, this line here, shall we say, all the ones that end in a zero. So keep your eyes and ears open for those when we count them now, and you'll recognise them when we count in tens in a moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 
70. 71. 72. 73. 74. 75. 76. 77. 78. 79. 80. 81. 82. 83. 84. 85. 86. 87. 88. 89. 90. 91. 92. 93. 94. 95. 96. 97. 98. 99. 100. We did it! All the way to 100, every number on the 100 square. Pat yourself on the back. Fantastic. Now we're going to count in tens. Notice how much quicker it is to count in tens to 100 than it is to count in ones when you count every number. So when we count in tens, we're just interested in this line down here. All the ones that end in a zero, all the multiples of 10. Are we ready? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. How quick was that to count in tens? That's because we're adding 10 numbers on every time we count a number, which means we do it 10 times quicker. That's fantastic counting in tens, isn't it? Wow. Okay, so let's see what I've got planned for you next. Ah, yes, I'm going to talk to my camera now because we're going to talk to you about a new, whoops, a new kind of thing with numbers. Okay, and this is called ordinal numbers, okay? Ordinal numbers. It's a bit like putting numbers, oh, I've chopped my head off. It's a bit like putting um, numbers in order, but I'll just explain exactly what I mean by that. Let's see if that's not chopped my head off anymore. I'll duck down. Okay, so ordinal numbers are a bit like when you're running a race, okay? And you'll come in first place. You'll be the first person across the line. You came first. That's an ordinal number first. Uh, then the person that comes in behind you, they have come in second. They're in second place. Second is an ordinal number. Then the person that comes in after the person that came second has come in third place. Third is an ordinal number. There are ordinal numbers that go all the way up. There's fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, they're all ordinal numbers, but they are in an order, like you'd count one, two, three, four, five, but you have to remember because you're talking about the position of something, you have to add that little bit on the end. So you get first, let me show you what first looks like. That's how it is written down as an ordinal number. A one, because you're in position one, you came across the line first. So there's a one, but then you have a st, because you're saying first. So that's first place. Sometimes you'll see, um, rosettes if you've won a race and they'll have first written on them like that meaning you came in the first place that's an ordinal number first then you've got second with a number two because you're the number two person across the line we've got an ordinal number third so you're in position three but you need this erd, erd on the end for third okay and then we have fourth You've come number four across the line if you're in a running race. This one is fifth. And this one is sixth. These are all ordinal numbers, okay? So position. Numbers, but in certain positions. They are ordinal numbers, okay? So I have got my teddy bears here today. And um, they are at the bus queue, okay? So I've got this teddy, you might remember him from the classroom. There he is, he's missed you guys. He is here at the bus queue. There he is. He's at the front, okay? Let's imagine that my pen pot, my Pringles pen pot, is the bus stop. So we can tell that he is at the front of the queue, okay? He's by the bus stop, all right? There he is. Now, 
someone else is coming along. It's a busy day at the bus stop. Along comes Dog, who seems to have a poorly um, little foot at the moment as well. Here he comes. He's coming up next at the bus stop. So he's next in the line. So Teddy's there by the bus stop. Then there is the dog. Then here comes other Ted. He needs to get into town. He's coming up behind this dog here. Okay, and I'm going to adjust my camera in a little bit so you get a better view. Then next in the line. So I'm going to tidy up. Next in the line, in the bus queue, who have we got next? Let's go for, oh, a lot of these teddies look the same. Here's our teddy. He's going to sit next in the queue. There you are, Ted, try and sit up. Don't fall asleep. Might miss the bus. Then we've got Foxy. Foxy's coming in the queue after that. And then we have Pig. Here is Pig. He's here. Oh, he's a very soft pig, actually. He is here in the queue. Okay, are you going to stay on the table there, pig? Right, so I'm going to tilt my camera a bit so you can see my cue really, really clearly. Okay, so this is my cue. So here's the bus stop. So the front of the queue starts here. And then these guys, don't fall over, Ted, you're number one in the queue. You haven't got a long wait. These guys are waiting for the bus in the line, okay? Now, I want you to help me out by giving the correct ordinal number to the person in the queue, depending on where they are in the line, okay? Which position they are in, in the bus stop queue. So let's start with a nice easy one. Number one in the queue, in first place. Who is first in the queue? Using my ordinal numbers, who is first in my bus queue? Here's the bus stop, so this is the front of the queue. Who is first? So hopefully you are pointing to Teddy in the yellow T-shirt. He is first in the bus queue. Okay, now who? I'm going to mix these up a bit. I don't want to do them too easy, okay? So next, my ordinal number is third. Who is in third place? The clue is here with how it's written. It's person in position number three when you're third place. Who is in third place? Is it dog? Is it pig? Is it this fluffy guy with a bow tie? You point on the camera of your tablet which one is in third place. Third place, position three on our ordinal numbers. Hopefully you are pointing to Teddy with a bow tie. First place, second, third. He's the th number three, the third one in the bus queue. So that goes to him. Right, okay, up next I have got ordinal number fourth. Fourth place. It's number four in the queue when you're fourth. So that's a good clue for you to point as to who is fourth in the bus queue with our ordinal numbers. Who gets the fourth card? Is it Ted? He's not got a card yet. Is it Foxy? Who is fourth with our ordinal numbers? Hopefully you are pointing to this Teddy here who was falling asleep earlier. He's in fourth place because he's one, two, three, four. He's number four in the queue, so he's in fourth place using our ordinal numbers. Okay. I've got here sixth place, okay? My ordinal number six. Who is in sixth place, okay? Clue here means it's this number along in the queue, position six to be in sixth place with our ordinal numbers. Who is in sixth place? Who? He still hasn't got one. Is he in sixth place? Is he person number six in the queue? Hmm, hopefully you are pointing to one, two, three, four, five, six. It's Pig at the very back is in sixth place. There you go, Pig. Right, I've got two left. This is getting a bit easier now because I've only got Doggy and Fox left, okay? Ordinal number second. So you're looking for the person who's number two in the queue for second place with our ordinal numbers. Who is second? Hopefully you are pointing to Dog. He's number two in the queue. He's in second place. 
is in the second position in the bus queue, which must mean that my last ordinal number, which is fifth, number five, in the number five position, fifth place goes to one, two, three, four, five. It goes to Foxy. He's in fifth place. There we are. So we can see, looking at our queue for the bus stop here, that first goes to Teddy, second to Doggy, third to this Ted with a bow tie, fourth to Sleeping Teddy, fifth to Foxy, and sixth to Pig. Now I won't be able to see if you're doing this right at home, but parents can see for me. I've just gone through them all. Have a good look at the ordinal numbers written like this. Can you point on the screen to the person who's got the card that says they are fourth? Fourth. Which one is in fourth place? Hopefully you are pointing to this ordinal number here and this teddy. Okay, can you point to the one who is in second place? The ordinal number that means second position. Hopefully you are pointing to dog. He's in second. There's the ordinal number, second place. Uh, can you point to the one who is in sixth place? Sixth place. Hopefully you are pointing to Piggy. He's in sixth place. There's our ordinal number for sixth. And last one, can you point to the one who's in first place? Who is in first place? The number one position, it's Teddy with the t-shirt. Lucky Teddy, he's going to get to go on the bus first. Off he goes, onto the bus. Followed by in second place, Doggy. And then there's room also for Bowtie Teddy in third place. And then, yeah, there's still some room at the back for Sleeping Teddy, wake him up, he's in fourth place. And then, oh yeah, there's definitely some standing room for Fox in fifth place in the queue. And yes, just room for Piggy to stand close to the driver in sixth place. They all managed to get on the bus. Okay, that is ordinal language, guys. That wasn't too bad at all, was it? Now, I'm not going to tilt the camera because I want to do another game here on front on the table. Now, this is still working with numbers and exploring numbers and making sure that we really know which number comes before another number, which number is bigger than another number, which number is smaller, where does it go compared to other numbers, okay? We just have a quick slurp of tea because it's been a chatty old day. Ah, thank you for your patience. Okay. Ah, I think maybe I've left my number cards in the other classroom. So I tell you what you're going to have to do for me a second. You're going to have to help me write these numbers on cards. Now from yesterday I've got 7, 8 and 2. So bear with me a moment. I'm going to write number 1. I'm going to write 3. I'm going to write 4. I must be missing a 5. So if you haven't got cards at home to do this with, and I've seen a lot of you have, then this is just basically how you make them real quick. Six, I've got seven and eight, I need a nine, and I need ten. Now I think probably I can go to eleven, twelve, thirteen, gosh, sorry about this, fourteen, nearly there, fifteen, 16, 17, and we're going to have enough, 18, Ooh, I think I'm out of cards, all done, right, I'll do mine to 18, but at home I think you could probably have a go to 20, okay, so get your cards out that are out to 20, I'm going to shuffle these, so I'm going to pick them up in a willy nilly way, so that I know they're not next to one another, where they should be not be because I want them all over the place. Okay, this is how we're going to do this game, all right? So, you can play with me here now, but then you can have a go again afterwards. So this is what we're going to do. I've got some shuffled cards, okay? And I'm going to put the top one on here, so the very top one I can't see, on the table. And it's number, oh, put it here, number 15. Okay, number 15, there it is, I'll put it there. Let me tidy my table 
because I want some more room for this, all right? So there is 15, okay? And uh, what happens next is that I am going to show a card to you and I want you to tell me roughly where it should go, all right? So there is 15. So you've got to think about whether it's the next number is going to be bigger or smaller. If it's bigger than 15, it will count on and go this way. If it's smaller than 15, it will go this way, counting backwards, okay? Now, you've got more room than I have at home. I've just got my table here and it's only so big. So, it's gonna be a little trickier for me to play than you. I'm gonna come round here though. So what I'm probably going to have to do I don't know if I'm going to fit them all on on my table, but well, let's see. So 15 is my first number. So I'm going to put 15 about here, okay? So if I'm counting up to 15, I'm going to put it there. So there, I'm going to show you the next card, okay? Well, that's a handy one. And you've got to tell me where I should place this next card, okay? I'm building my own number line is the idea. So I've just pulled out this number, which hopefully you are calling out to the screen is, it's a teen number with one in front, 16. Now, you've got to tell me, is that a smaller number than 15? Should it come this side, counting backwards? Or is it a bigger number than 16? Should I place it somewhere up here? Okay? And not only have you got to think about, is it this side for smaller or this side for a bigger number? Also, how much room I need to leave for other numbers that might need to go in between. So, 16, where should I put it? Do I put it here, counting backwards? Or is it bigger than 15? Is it counting on? So hopefully you're telling me that 16 is bigger than 15 and it's also only one more. So it needs to go right next to 15. So hopefully that's what you called out to me. Okay, my next one is this number here. This is number nine. So you've got to be telling me at home, is it a smaller number than 15 and 16? So should it come this side counting back this way or is it bigger should i put it after 16 and count on where should nine go which side counting on to bigger numbers or counting back to smaller numbers it should be counting back this side and then you've got to decide should it be right next to 15 or are there other numbers in between do we normally count 9 15 no, there's quite a few numbers in between. So you've got to have a sort of idea about where you'll put it in order to leave enough room for the other numbers you've got to count. I think probably about here for number nine. Okay. Next one out is, it's a teen number with one in front. It is 13. Tell me, call out to your screen. Is it a smaller number than 15? So do I need to put it this side? Is it bigger than nine? So does it need to be somewhere in between nine and 15? Bigger than nine, but smaller than 15. Or do I need to come up here where it's even bigger than 16? Where does it need to go? If you're calling out to tell me it goes here, somewhere in between nine and 15, you're absolutely right because it's bigger than nine, but it's smaller than 15. So I reckon about there. Hopefully that's what you were calling out. Okay, my next number. Oh, another nice one. Is 17. Nice and easy, this. Where should this go? Be calling out to the screen. 17 is, of course, one more than 16. So very handily, it goes there next to 16. Okay, next one out. Number seven. Where should seven go? Be calling out, point to the screen. Is it bigger than 13? Should it go this side, counting on? Is it smaller than 13? Should it go this side? But then you've got to ask yourself, is it bigger or smaller than nine? Should it go here with bigger than nines or here with smaller than nines to make our own number line? Where should it go? Hopefully you told me this side because it's smaller than nine. It doesn't come just before nine, so I'm gonna leave a little bit of a space here, and put it there, okay? So there's my seven. Right, I'm gonna do one more with you now on the camera, but you get the idea of what it is you've got to do at home. So find those one to 20 cards again, and have a go doing it on your carpet floor, I think's the best plan, because you can have a long, long number line up to 20 then, and not run out of table room. So let's just do one more. There you go, let's go with this one, that's a bit more. What number is this? 
A lot of you lately are calling it tw 20, certainly in class. So you have to remember it's not 20 because the 2 would be at the front. It is 12. So where does 12 go? Mm, have a think. Is it bigger than 17? So that therefore this way, off, off the camera screen in fact. Uh, is it smaller than 15? Oh, yes, I think it is smaller than 15. But then I've got to ask myself, is it smaller than, um, is it bigger than 13? Should it be this side of 13? No, it shouldn't, should it? It's smaller than 13, so it should be over this side. There we go. It's actually one less than 13, so hopefully you said it should go there. And I know it's bigger than 9, so I'm happy as to where it is. Okay, so the idea of this is that you are basically building your own number line, okay? So you know how a number line 1 to 20 goes. It just feels a little extra tricky because you've got to work out how much space to leave in between to put down some of these numbers, all right? But I think you can do this. Don't forget, if you put it down and you run out of room in between, just shuffle them down, shuffle them along to leave enough room. It's absolutely fine. You might have to move a few a bit to get them all in. But let's hopefully see on tapestry all those number lines to 20, where you have put your numbers in the right place. If you're finding it a bit tricky doing them all by yourself, maybe you could say to mums and dads, you do one and I'll do the next one. So we'll work together to build our number line to 20. If 20 is a bit tricky, then work on one to 10 first and see how that goes. If you find it's a lot easier than you thought, then try going on, doing the 11 to 20 then, okay, and see how you go. If you're finding one to 20 just too easy, then maybe write yourself out some new cards from 21 to 30 and see if you can do it for that as well okay so lots of options there to stretch yourself or if you're finding it a bit tricky to make it a little easier all right but let's see some great number line building on tapestry um, I think that's all for our maths lesson today it is so we've learned ordinal language so first second third fourth and we have built our own number line, done lots of counting. So I will see you again tomorrow for some more exploring of numbers. Bye-bye.